Hello. Oh, this is on. How's it going, people? Yeah. Middle section is the only one here tonight. That's good to know. The front section over here is here. Anyone over here? Are y'all awake? Hi, David. How are you? Hey, Alex. Hello, everybody. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cooper. How are you? Okay. So, one second. Let me get organized. Okay, so, who is, <laughs> Cole, I just saw your hat, dude, oh my gosh, stand up real quick, that thing is like, gig- oh wow, there's a lot more to that than just the hat. <laughs> if anyone is having trouble with their satellite cable, Cole will come and stand on your roof and help you with that, that's incredible, wow, okay, so, huh, not every time, so, Tonight we are, how does this thing work? There it is, okay. So tonight we are continuing our series called Love Sick, where of course it's the month of February, so naturally we have to look at things about love and dating, right? Because who doesn't love love and dating, right? Good, no one raised their hands, that's great. I was worried some people might. So tonight we get the fun opportunity to talk about dating, specifically the fact that dating Though it is a great thing, it's not everything, just like how this stand is not everything for me right now. We're just going to make it work. Okay. So, dating is a good thing, but it's not everything. So, when I was in high school, where are the high schoolers at? By show of hands. Wow. Junior high, I love y'all too. I'm not trying to exclude you, but... When I was in high school, I thought that dating was everything, right? So I, in my sophomore year of high school, dated a girl for like six months, and then she broke up with me because I was a horrible boyfriend, to be completely honest with you. Just being honest, God redeems. He's worked on me a lot since then, so here I stand, a married man. So shout out to Callie, and there goes my phone. This stand's not working. Okay. Okay. Oh. That's a Dallas Baptist University education for you right there. They didn't teach you that in ministry school. How do you make the stand work just like that? Okay. Thank you for dealing with me on that one. So, in high school, I thought that dating was everything. I dated a girl for six months, right? She dumped me. I was a horrible boyfriend. God has redeemed me, thankfully. But... After that, when I was no longer in a relationship, I missed that period of my life. I was like, I miss having my person. Everyone else around me is dating. All the popular people are dating. The people on the basketball team, if you can believe I was on the basketball team. I was once athletic. All of them were dating. And so I was like, I just missed that point in my life. Like, everyone's doing it. It's all over social media. Like, I just really, really want to be in a relationship again. So most of my junior year, I devoted a lot of time and energy in trying to get back into a relationship. I tried spitting some game with the girls in class. Thank you, yes. I tried to riz them up, as you would say. <laughs> Y'all didn't think I would know that word. I hope that made a lot of you uncomfortable, because that was the goal, right? So I would try my best to get the girls to like me. I tried sliding into some DMs, which, quick side note... Guys and girls, y'all let me know if this is true. Don't do that. Ask girls out in person, okay? Females, yes. Yes. Free dating advice. Did you hear all the cheers? Ask them out in person, all right? Don't do that nonsense. So I did all that, and none of it worked. Throughout the rest of my time in high school, I did not end up in another relationship, which was probably for the best. And so... I thought at that point that dating was everything. I thought it's what I needed to fix and fill all the gaps that I had in my life. But in reality, when I finally let go of that desire of wanting to date, when God finally got through to me that you don't have to date in high school, you can just let it go and focus on me, that is when I really found everything that I was looking for. So last week, Grace was here, Grace Todd, and she mentioned that our culture has kind of perceived dating to be something or perceived dating to be everything, right? something that everyone's doing, something that you should be doing. It's all over social media. You probably see it in school, culture, all the things, right? People might say, if you're not dating, you're missing out. 
if you're not dating, maybe there's something wrong with you. Maybe there's a reason that people aren't wanting to date you. Maybe you have that insecurity of why does no one want to date me? Why am I with nobody? Why don't girls like me? Why don't boys like me? And that's a real insecurity, right? And maybe this is something that's still said a lot today in our culture, in our world, on social media. People say, just go out and date a whole bunch of people. Figure out what you like, figure out what you don't like, and just date a whole bunch of people, which is horrible, horrible advice. Never follow that. When you are dating someone, you should be dating them with the intention to marry them, not to use them for a period of time to figure out if you like them, if you don't like them, what do you like in a person. You should be dating someone with the intention that you will marry them down the road. Thank you for that. I think that's the first time I've gotten an amen. I appreciate that. That is an amen, though. All right, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So by show of hands, who has heard someone anywhere, social media, life, school say, just do whatever you want to do, right? Has anyone ever heard that popular saying? Some yeses, some hands raised, right? That's a lot of what we hear in today's world, right? Just do what you want to do. Whatever you want to do, be who you want to be, date as many people as you want. Whatever you want to do, just do it. And that's what Paul is addressing in this verse when he says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. And as human beings, we do have the right to do whatever we want to do. God has given us free will to make choices, both good and bad, of what we want to do. But as this verse says, even though we have the right to do anything we want to do, it doesn't mean that that choice is going to be beneficial for you. Like right now, I could turn this mic off, put it down, and just walk out of here, go to my office, grab my wallet and keys, and just leave. And thank you for doing that. That's really encouraging, right? But I could just leave and never come back. But would that be something beneficial for me to do? No. Y'all are really interactive tonight. I'm not sure what to do with this. It wouldn't be beneficial for me to do, right? Because I'd be fired, obviously. I would not continue to, I would fail on my commitments to be here for you guys, to teach you guys, and to fulfill my responsibilities at the church. It's something that I could do, but it's not beneficial for me to do that. And the thing is, all of us are born naturally as sinners. The things that we naturally want to do are not good for us. They go against God's plan for our life. They go against God's will for our life. And they may seem good, but they're not good. And when you adopt the mentality that I can just do whatever I want, and you put dating, you put a relationship status, you put a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever it may be, on a pedestal where they're not meant to be or where that relationship status is not meant to be, it's going to leave you very disappointed. And I can tell you that from experience, that it will leave you disappointed. Some of you can probably say from experience that putting that thing on a pedestal will leave you disappointed. A boyfriend or a girlfriend will not be the answer to everything that you ever wanted. They just won't. They will not be the answer to everything that you ever wanted. While they can be good, they cannot be your everything. If we were to put it another way, too much of a good thing makes it no longer a good thing. Proverbs 25, 16 says, if you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it, and you will vomit. So if you are putting your everything into dating and relationships as your security, your identity, your purpose, your belonging, your fill in the blank, whatever it may be for you, if you're putting all of that into dating, you'll quickly realize that it cannot fill that role. It can't fill that gap. Like this verse in Proverbs says, honey is a good thing, right? Honey is delicious. Can I hear an amen for that one? Amen, right? I don't know if you've seen Pizza Hut's commercial for the new hot honey pepperoni pizza. Yes, that thing is delicious. Can I hear an amen for that as well? That wasn't as loud. Okay, it's a really good pizza. Actually, a good idea. But, right? So honey, that pizza, all that stuff is really good. But what happens if you eat too much of it, right? Because as humans, there's only so much that we can naturally eat. And if we eat too much, if I tried to order five boxes of that pizza and eat it on my own, if I was even able to do such a thing, if I didn't throw up before that, I would throw up at the end of the fifth box. Because it's not something that we're meant to do. We're not made for that. We're not made for that to have that spot in life. And it's the same thing with dating. 
we're not meant to make dating our everything because it is unqualified to be our everything. We're not meant to make dating our everything because it is unqualified to be our everything. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. There's only one thing that is qualified to be your everything. It's not relationship status. It's not a boyfriend. It's not a girlfriend. It is a relationship with God. It is seeking him first. Thank you. It is seeking him first in all that you do. That is the only thing that is qualified to be your everything. Your everything should be seeking after God, wanting to be more and more like him, know him more, love him more, share the good news of the gospel with others. And when we live our lives solely focused on seeking first the kingdom of God, of going after God with everything that we have, running that race, everything else in our lives is going to fall into place. Now, does that mean that if you come to church enough and you check off all the boxes and you read your Bible enough and you're here on Wednesday nights and you answer enough of the small group questions that God's going to give you the boyfriend or the girlfriend that you want? No, that's not what we're saying. We don't follow God because we're trying to get what we want. Christianity is not a checklist where you come here enough or you read your Bible enough or you pray enough or you talk about God enough and you get what you want. We follow after God, we seek him, we come here on Wednesday nights because of what he did for us on the cross. That is why we come here. That is why we seek after him, because what he has done for us. We love him because he first loved us. And when you're chasing after God with everything that you have, there'll be a picture here on the screen to help with this to illustrate. When you're chasing after God with everything you have and you are running down that path, pursuing God, you're going to church because you love God, you're in community, you're doing all these things, not with the hope that you're going to get what you want from it, not with the hope that you're going to get some sort of reward, but just because you love God and you want to pursue him. When you're running down that path, at some point you will look up and you will see somebody next to you running just as hard, solely focused on God. And at that point, your paths will come together. And when that time comes and you have that relationship, does that mean that you just stop? I don't have to pursue God anymore. I don't have to go after him anymore. I have what I want. I have the relationship. You don't stop at that point. You see these paths, when they come together, they don't stop. These paths don't come together at the top of the mountain and they're done. They keep going. When that time comes and you're with that person, you keep running after God just as hard as you were before. The relationship is not the end game. The end game is to go to the gates of heaven and hear, well done. So when you get to that point, you keep running with that person, you keep running with that boy or that girl, and you keep chasing after God with everything. The relationship is not the end game. God's glory in seeking first the kingdom is. Philippians 3, 8 through 9 says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. I can promise you, and there's a lot of adults in the room and even some of you students already know this, but I can promise you a relationship with Jesus and going after him with everything is going to be the best thing you could possibly do with your life. Nothing comes close to that. I know this is something I talk about a lot. I'm going to talk about it until the day I die because it's that important. We were made for a relationship with God. We were made to be in connection with the one that has created us. I like the way that the NIV translation puts Philippians 3.8. It says, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage. So relationship status, garbage compared to knowing Jesus. Being in a relationship like everybody else, just because it's the thing to do and everyone else is doing it, garbage compared to knowing Jesus. Letting your identity, your security, your belonging, your purpose, letting everything that you are be defined by whether or not you're in a relationship is garbage compared to knowing Jesus. Everything else in this world except Jesus and a relationship with him is garbage because that is what we were made for. 
we were made for a relationship with Jesus to seek him first, run after him, and seek first the kingdom. Nothing can replace Jesus in your life. No relationship can replace Jesus in your life. If you're in a relationship, even for those of us that are married, we can all probably say there's a point in time that our boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife has not been our favorite person because they might have done something that's frustrated us and we don't want to be around them. And that's because we're all sinners. We're not perfect. And if you put too much stock in that person, you will be severely disappointed time after time because they cannot fill the role that Jesus is supposed to fill in your life. A girlfriend or a boyfriend can be good, but they're a lousy Jesus. A girlfriend or a boyfriend can be good, but they are a lousy replacement for Jesus Christ. I promise you that pursuing Jesus, making him your everything, will be ten times better than any relationship you could ever have. Ten times better than anything any other guy or girl could ever do for you. And as we close and as the band comes back up, I want to challenge y'all with something. I want y'all to think about the priorities in your life. What are your priorities? You can know your priorities by what you spend the most time thinking about, what you spend the most time doing. For some of us, if we're honest, those priorities may be thinking about dating. It might be the relationship that we're already in. It might be trying to get into a relationship. It might be, does this girl like me? Does this boy like me? If that is the thing that you are thinking about all the time, I want to challenge you to replace that with Jesus, to replace that with reading the Bible, to replace that with praying, and to put Jesus first in those moments. For those of you that are dating, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or do anything embarrassing, so don't worry. For those of you that are dating, I want to encourage you to keep your priority on Jesus first, not your significant other. Like that picture showed us, run that race together solely focused on Jesus. Because the best relationships are built on two people that are following Jesus together. And glorifying him in all things. Because you can love that person better when you're filled with the love of Christ first. Jesus loves you and making him your everything will be the best decision you can ever do. And I promise you that. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us this time here tonight to come and learn from your word, to worship you, to be with our friends and have fun with Western Night and the themes and all the stuff. But God, I pray that tonight um, that your word just seeps into the hearts of these students. Anything that I said that was not from you, that it falls on deaf ears, that it's forgotten, God. Whatever it is you want these students to know, that you just press it on their hearts to where they just have to talk about in small groups, they have to talk to their small group leader, God. And I just pray that small groups are an encouraging time, that people open up, that they're real, they talk about where they're at. They talk about struggles they may have with dating God and that we all leave here tonight challenged to want to know you more, to want to prioritize you and a relationship with you more. So God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this place. Thank you for these people. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.